Papa TV, the Inspire series on Hospitality Asia channel. I'm Jennifer Ong, the founder of Papa TV. Today, we have Deepa Ori with us, the CEO of Le Bois Hotels and Resorts Bangkok, who has made Le Bois a global luxury brand in just 18 years. Deepa is a successful self-made entrepreneur who has the guts of the bold and the heart of a humanitarian. He has an outrageous love for luxury, which he believes in an emotional experience rather than material gain. To him, luxury is not price tag. It is an experience. In this hyper competitive world where the bottom line has always been profits, Deepak equates success to self-respect and compassion. He believes that in business and in life, true fulfillment comes from listening not just to industry experts, but to the whispers of our own hearts. Let's find out more about Deepa Ori, his journey to success, and his new book. Hi, Deepa. Welcome back to Hapa TV. Thank you, Jen. How are you? Hi. Good. Thank you. I it's an honor good. to be back. <laughs> I know. You were, you were my third guest on my show in June last year when I pivoted uh, my magazine to Hapa TV. So it's so nice to have you back with us. It's my honor. And I see you're doing very well. Wish you all the best. And Thank such you. an honor to be part of Hospitality Asia channel. And first off, Inspire series. Yes. Thank you so much. So how are things in Bangkok? Things in Bangkok is exactly what and how the things are in Asia. Uh, mm -hmm. We are going through, uh, I would say, a time which everyone is going through. So mm -hmm. I think we should Everyone knows about that. So why don't we dive in and talk more appropriate things and more positive things for people today? Absolutely. That's great. Now, right. So I know you're writing your first book titled A Bridge Not Too Far. So let's dive straight in to talk about that book, right? So yeah. now your book is uh, A Bridge Not Too Far, Journey to Stars. Can you tell us more about it and what inspired you to write the book? Okay, what inspires me to write this book is, uh, you know, I have, you know about me quite a lot. I think our association goes many, many years back. And uh, I do come from a very humble background. And uh, my journey was uh, where it has reached today is a dream. It's a dream for me also and it's a dream for many people. But the reason I'm writing this book is not that I am so successful and that's the reason I'm writing the book. I'm writing this book for the people who always leave their dream half mm -hmm. And uh, that is something which we or none of us should be doing. A perfect example of that is a recent Olympics in Tokyo where Hassan, the lady, fell down and again mm -hmm. ran and won the gold medal. We all will, are going to fall down. We all are going to get up. But the point is never give up in the race until the result is declared. And this book is about everyone because everyone dream can be realized. Just imagine a world where even 10% more people after this book is released, their dreams are realized. Wow. Wow. That, you know, I, I just, just with that concept, I mean, I read the book, um, I read some chapters of your book and it was already inspirational. So I cannot imagine when the entire book is finished and, you know, so Thank I am you. looking for it. Now, there was a chapter about your goals and you said yours wasn't to make money or become a CEO or even to get recognition, right? Because all these were just byproducts of something that you deeply yearn for, which was self-respect. Can you explain more on this? Uh, Jen, uh, there are two incidents which are very important for me uh, mm -hmm. for self-respect, where self-respect is in every individual. Mm -hmm. The point is, when do you realize that self-respect becomes more important for you? For me, the first incident was when I was almost three and a half or four year old, when I was told that I cannot cross the road because across the road lives the rich people. That was the mm -hmm. number one thing that told me that self-respect is very important. And second part is when I was in my first job and one day my boss called me, I think I was staying almost uh, eight or nine kilometers away from him. And he had all the staff and infrastructure. He said, I want you to go to this restaurant and get the food packed and bring it to me. And that's where I realized 
that where I stand in his eyes. And then I realized that it's not about his or her eyes. I should be standing with my head up in my eyes. And these two incidents have led me to this journey. And that's why when I say that being CEO, being successful, money, uh, making money is all byproducts. I never went for this. I just went that I should be able to held up my head high always. Right. But, but why is self-respect so important to you, Deepa? Self-respect is important for everybody because self-respect is something which gives you the confidence. Self-respect is something which gives you the energy. It's a fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, this lady who won the Olympic gold medal after falling down, I'm just going to a recent example so every viewer can relate to it, yeah. was a refugee from Ethiopia, moved mm -hmm. to Holland at the age of 50. It was not for her to win. It was for her self-respect. And we all need few to live our life. We all need our motivation. And that was my motivation. That was something which was more important for me. The most tangible thing in me today, what I can yes. look at is my self-respect. Yes. I mean, I agree, totally agree with you, Deepa, on that point, because I think, you know, with, with a highly competitive red race world, you know, people, and, and of course now with the, with the social media in terms of comments coming in, people get so affected by what others say that they lose self-respect for themselves, right? They, they doubt themselves and they don't even know what they're doing is right or wrong and they get so influenced by, by all the negativity that's coming from uh, comments and also coming from their, their followers. So, so I think that is an area where we would really need to look into grooming, especially the young generation in terms of respecting themselves and loving themselves. So, so your point of that, I mean, that is going to be one of the key um, content, the key chapters, then yes, then I think, you know, young entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs should be reading your book for sure. Thank you. So, now I like to come to this point. I love this particular part where you wrote. Now, of course, you know, those who are tuning in, I had a chance to have a sneak preview on some of the chapters from Deepa, who was so kindly shared with me. And I love this particular part where you wrote, the personal challenge to write this book is not about writing it well, but about reliving the meaningful memories. And through your experience, you shared your inspiration to get on the bridge that is not too far from reaching the stars. So what I really like to know is how far were you on the bridge before you reached the stars? So this book has got 11 chapters and the biggest twist in this book is, though this book is inspirational, mm -hmm. uh, it is for everyone who wants to achieve something in life. But the most important part is uh, chapter 10, is lies the biggest climax and that is where the title of the chapter 10 itself is a bridge not too far so chapter 10 is where the whole essence of my life of 34 35 years lies okay so that is something i want people to buy the book that is getting out in march to read and uh, and chapter 11 is for all the business schools it mm. is the concise pressy of everything that we have put in chapter 10, all chapter 10, 1 to 10, we have put in chapter 11. Right, right. So who, who, would, who would benefit the most from reading this book? People who have done the journey, what they missed, people who wants to start the journey, the students, people who are in the midst of the journey, people who have given up, for them it will be very inspirational to read the book and to start the journey. So it is for different walk of life. Uh, mm -hmm. I was, uh, means I think uh, I was thinking of only publishing it in English, but I may go for two or three different other languages also. Wow, wow, that would be awesome. Yeah, I think, I think that would be really good because then the reach uh, to really literally, like you say, you know, where it connects with people from all walks of life and it, if it can be done in different languages, that would really be able to impact more, you know, especially I think the younger generation and the aspiring entrepreneurs would benefit a lot. Now, 
coming to the next question, I was just thinking, Deepa. Now, I'm a true believer of embracing every event in life whether it's negative or positive, right? As they may turn out to be, you know, turning points in our life. I've had a few, I've had quite a few turning points, events where, you know, my life just went, I, I, you know, at one moment I thought that's the end of it. You know, that's the end of the journey. I've lost it all. And then the next thing I know is like, wow, you know, I'm entering a new world. Just like, just like with Hapa TV, the same thing. And I thought last year that was it, you know, my entire business would just, would just go off. And I think we were in contact before COVID started and I texted you and told you that, you know, I am coming to a, to a point where I'm getting a bit burnout and, you know, I'm not feeling it anymore. And I remember what you told me that I should take seven days off, 14 days off and go and, and really rethink and recharge and get myself again. And, and I thought at that time, Deepak, you know, things were going to be over for me, right? And, and then, of course, with, with what has happened with COVID, the, the fact that I had to digitalize myself, transform my business, and then I suddenly felt that, wow, this is another huge turning point. So I'm very, very um, passionate about this particular topic. So losing my business or almost losing my business during COVID was one of them. So my question to you is now you took on a job uh, of opening the Marsha International Restaurant and beer house at President Park in Bangkok, which to me was a turning point for you because that was where you met the people who are now the owners of Le Bois. So can you tell us a little bit more about that turning point of your life? Sri, this turning point comes in everyone's life. So I'm very grateful to the owners of Le Bois, first of all, to give me this opportunity. Yeah. Okay, so that is for the record. Second thing is, there are two kinds of people and I'll take your example. One is called entitlement. Mm -hmm. They will not work hard. They believe they are entitled to every position, every successful man that they need that position. They will not work hard. And a person like you, a person like me, who goes up and down and still get up and still run, you know why? Just one line, we don't feel sorry for ourselves. The day we start feeling sorry for ourselves is the day we have lost it. That one word is such a powerful word. And there's a chapter about that in the book. So there are two different kinds of people you meet entitled. Oh, Jan Harper TV is doing very well. Oh, I mm -hmm. should be doing that. I can do better. Oh, she's wearing a black dress. I could have been in a yellow dress or a pink dress and would look better. Oh, Deepak is CEO of Love. Oh, I can do a better job than him. These are the people who are entitled. They will not work hard. And they are the people who will respect because respect is a two-way street. They will mm -hmm. always respect, like I gave the example of the lady, uh, mm -hmm. Miss Hassan, in Olympic. There are many examples like that. Uh, that is one of the reasons. Your example, how uh, we spoke and I said, take seven days or 14 days off and then go for it. So, so this is what life is. Because why I told you, because you're a person who will feel sorry for yourself. I'm not a person who feels sorry for ourselves. And this book is to teach people that don't feel mm -hmm. sorry for yourself. It doesn't tell this, don't feel sorry for yourself. Actually, it tells you in detail how you feel mm -hmm. sorry for yourself and you mm -hmm. cannot rise. And how mm -hmm. you should not feel sorry for yourself, rise and work hard. Mm. Wow, I love that. I love that. Wow, okay. I didn't really find that connection, but now I do, right? Because it was, I, I mean, I, I, I'm very connected with the turning points, but I didn't see from that point of view, but I totally agree with you. I totally do, you know, because I think, if I did feel sorry for myself because of what has happened, uh, um, which is impacted by COVID, then obviously I would not be, you know, immediately going into a resourceful manner, a resourceful state and, and looking at ways and say, how can I revive my business, right? I'm not going to give up. I'm just going to find ways to do it. So, so yeah, so I, you know, I am truly looking forward to reading your book, you know, Deepa, please, please, please do send me a copy once it's I will, I will. Thank you so much. That goes without <laughs> yeah. saying. Yeah. You know, and and um, and yeah. So you know, it, it's such an inspiring sharing, and and uh, it's an honor to have you on our show. You know, so I have been wanting to write my book for ages, Deepak. You know, and now I'm personally inspired to write a book too, uh, and and you know, share my story, and use that as a 
as a form of, to inspire other women, to inspire other, other, other entrepreneurs out there, like you said, you know, who's from all walks of life, who's probably either giving up or given up and, you know, to, to, to come back up, you know, because we can definitely bounce back on our, on our you, toes. You have a beautiful feet. story, Jen, you have a beautiful story, but I give you a suggestion since it is first of the series, let it right. run for 10 more series of Inspire. Let, yeah. And then you take those 10 people as an example. Your story itself is a journey. Okay. Uh, and you combine that, it will be a great bestseller. And that, that will be something where people would look up, look up to. And I, I really want to congratulate you at this point of time when people don't know what you do. You have come up with this idea of Inspire. So, 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 so you are a person who will never feel sorry for yourself. So well done, young lady. Thank Continue you. success for you. Godspeed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, I love that tip and I will definitely do. I will definitely do that. So, you know, to all the fresh graduates, aspiring entrepreneurs out there, I'm sure you find Deepak's book very compelling, right? He overcomes his challenges based on his convictions and he believes that any dreams can be achieved. If you're willing to be courageous to face your mistakes and not compromise on your self-respect and don't feel sorry for yourself. And I'm sure Deepa's story will resonate with every fresh graduate and, um, you know, for the, for the sheer greed and intensity shown by his characteristics in the face of adversity. So his journey, I would say, is one of the common man, the one who has big dreams and wonders how he would ever achieve them. If you want to know more about Deepa's story, you must, must, must get a hold of his copy of his book that is called A Bridge Not Too Far. So, you know, Deepa, any last words before we um, uh, end the episode? I think you're doing a great job. And that, especially at this point of time, keep it up. And thanks, viewers, for watching this. And continue to watch Inspire TV. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Deepa. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for watching the Inspire series on Hospitality Asia channel. Follow us on Hapa TV Facebook for more real life stories. I'm Jennifer Ong and signing off.